of course, a good way to learn to lay out PC boards is to look to see how other people have done it. Um, if you have the chance to ever watch somebody who's trained and really good, you'll learn a lot from them. But not everybody's going to have that opportunity to look over somebody's shoulder. Um, but we can take a look at their final output. We can see what people have done and see what we like about it, see what we don't like about it. Maybe we'll pick up a trick or two along the way. Unfortunately, we might pick up a bad habit along the way also, so kind of be careful about that. So I've got a couple PC boards here. We'll, we'll zoom in on this one. This one is uh, very old school. It has 1984 right on it. So this is, this is before there was really uh, modern PC boards. Everything, everything sort of used the same substrate. It's a really hard FR4. This is probably when FR4 was its best. Uh, the FR4 that's used today is very gummy. It's very soft, but back in the old days, it was really, really hard. So maybe this actually isn't FR4, but we certainly called it that. Um, so this is when uh, silkscreen or solder mask was an extra steps that nobody wanted to pay for. They probably had it, but they were they were just they were expensive, and why bother? You didn't really need them. And uh, so these are basically just. Uh, it is a two-sided board. It does have plated through holes, so it is pretty fancy, but yeah, none of that other stuff. Um, it has been, uh, I don't know if they called it that back then, but it was a hot air, air, air level solder. It does have a layer of something on top, and I believe it's just a tin lead layer on top. Um, if you don't have the ability to put nomenclature and stuff on a silk screen, you could always still just etch it right on the board with, uh, uh, if you have real estate, if you have something left over, you could put it in. So very often, the only thing that you would see written on boards is the manufacturer or the part number, stuff like that. You wouldn't have any way of knowing, you know, what was the, is this R1, is that R2? You just, you wouldn't have any, any way of knowing that, all right? So let's take a look at a couple other boards. Uh, here's a nice board. Uh, this one uh, I got, oh, this was the 68008 uh, single board computer that I built. I don't remember who designed this board, but um, it is a pretty nice layout. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's this, uh, it's this KiCad on the bottom. Um, so a CAD tool was used very nicely. Um, he follows the idea of on the front, he wants everything up and down, and on the back, he wants everything side to side. Uh, I usually do, on the top, I do everything side to side, and on the bottom, I do everything up and down. So it's just kind of personal preference of, of which, way, which way you like to do things. Or it might have just been, it sort of worked out that way. Because these chips sit in here like this, all of your data lines are going to be going up and down and up and down and up and down. Now, I don't think his layout of the of the memory chips was very good. They don't look like they... I don't know. It looks like it could have been better. Just the way that the... I could be wrong. I didn't lay out this board, so I could be wrong. Um, a lot of silk screen, which is good. It's, it's, it's readable. Um, fairly small traces. Uh, I don't know how small these are, but they're, they're very, very thin traces. You have to make a decision on what size trace you w feel comfortable with. Some people just kind of use the default, and you might end up laying everything on 6 mil traces, and I think that's kind of silly. If 10 mil traces, for through-hole boards, you know, 10, 12, 12 mil traces are probably fine, you might just kind of be limiting, limiting yourself with having s such small traces, but... Uh, they usually, they usually work fine, and the reliability is pretty good with manufacturing boards. Um, I thought I'd show these two boards as an example of readability. Uh, so the, the, electrically, they're probably just fine. This is a really big fancy board, and uh, has uh, gold, uh, gold plating everywhere, so uh, that's, that's super nice. Um, it's difficult to read the silkscreen. Uh, it just, it, the font size is a bit small, 
uh, white on red is is a bit a bit difficult. Um, you take a look, uh, contrast it with with this board. It's boom. Oh, this one's super easy. Nice fat lines. Nice big font. Um, it's really easy to read the silk screen on this one. And this is a problem that I've had in the past. I've done a lot of boards where they came back and I went, oh, geez, I can't even read my own silk screen. Uh, I just chose the wrong font. So a lot of times it's really good to go into a Gerber viewer and look to see what you're really going to get. Sometimes the Gerber viewers will lie to you. Sometimes the font that you use is not the font that will end up on the actual PC board itself. So you have to be very, very careful of that. So it's really good to look at the Gerber viewer that they're going to use. Whoever is manufacturing your board, use their Gerber viewer because then that's what you're going to see. Um, a lot of times your Gerber viewer might give you one idea, but their Gerber viewer will give you a different idea. So be aware of that not, not, all, not all people interpret their Gerber files exactly the same way, especially with fonts. Okay. Uh, that's what I want to say about that one. These are super tiny. Um, and the reason that I bring these up is these are all about the same size. They're very, very small. Um, you know, they're about two inches by two inches. And um, this one, this one has readable, readable uh, numbers and letters and stuff. This one's done really, really well. You can see that even though this is a super small board, they didn't skimp on, on trace size. They, they use nice fat traces. You know, these are probably 16 mil traces. Um, but, you know, it's a through-hole board and didn't need fancy, th narrow stuff. And uh, it, came out, it came out just fine. So, um, yeah, don't, don't be afraid of a little bit thicker trace. Uh, here is a board uh, that... Uh, is is uh, I don't know what CAD package they used or if they even used a CAD package, but everything is right angles. A lot of people don't like this right angle thing, where everything is a square trace. Um, yeah, I mean it's okay, uh, but nice fat lines on the top, lots of letters and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that came out pretty good. I don't know where I got this board, but uh, it's an example of. Lots and lots of little parts, you know, everything is really jammed up in here and there is really very little nomenclature. There's just no room for it. So if a pick a place robot was building this board, it doesn't care. It knows where things go, but uh, very hard to troubleshoot this board because you wouldn't know what, what went where. And, um, yeah, not the greatest board. I'm not a real fan of, uh, not a very big, big fan of that board. All right, let's look at some, some of the boards that I've laid out. Uh, this was a project that never quite saw the light of day. Uh, it was going to be a guitar switcher, a pedal switcher, um, and it just has a trouble and I kind of lost interest in it. But uh, again, uh, on the front, oh, see on the front, I uh, made a liar out of myself. On the front, I was going up and down and on the back, I was going side to side. So yeah, there you go. Make a liar out of me. Um, but this is a mix of uh, a few th through hole parts and mostly surface mount. Um, nomenclature and stuff's not bad. I can't read, the text is way too small down here. I can't read any of the R values or C values and stuff. They, they're just way, way, way too, way, way, way too small. All right. Uh, let's pick something else up. Uh, here's a board I did. Uh, and... It has a problem with the, uh, the, these connectors here are SMA connectors and they're just too close together. They laid out nice on the PC board, but when you actually go use it, it's very difficult to put one connector here and one connector here right next to each other. It's just not a lot of room, especially on, on these up here. So um, even though sometimes you have best intentions and you lay something out, when you actually go to use it, you go, oh, this is a little bit, a little bit crowded. That was a little bit crowded. Um, I wanted to show this board because um, if you don't have the luxury of building PC boards for, for free, I'm very lucky with PCBWay. Um, 
uh, I used to use um, a vendor and they told you, I think it was 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. It was a fixed price. It was like $5 for five boards or I don't know, something, right? I think I've got them as cheap as like uh, 20 cents each. Sometimes they have deals and stuff running around too. Um, but let's say you wanted a whole bunch of small boards. I would, if you, if you try to lay out each one of these boards, it'll get expensive because each board, each board is one of those minimum order things. Um, so what I would do is I would just smash a whole bunch of little boards and put a 50 mil wide line between them, which is about the kerf of my bandsaw blade. And then I could get these built and then I would separate all, them all just using my bandsaw and I'd saw them all up. And then I, I only had to pay one PC board price, but I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 14, 15, 15 I lost count. But you got a lot of boards out. Um, so yeah, uh, that's a good trick to know. And here I made two PC boards, one smaller than the other, but that's okay. You just, you just have the board outline look like that. And then you saw those in half. Here I got creative with the board outline, uh, so I used uh, a, a route here, so the board came out with a big notch in it here, so when I, when I separate things, uh, I don't have to do the work, they did a lot of the work for me. Uh, so that, just some idea that, yeah, boards don't have to be rectangular, they can be all sorts of different shapes. I would mention though that uh, they can't make square corners. There's going to be a little bit of, they're going to use their smallest router bit to, to give you a good, try to make, make it as good as possible, but there will be a little radius down in these notches. Uh, here's a board. I think this is an 8085 single board computer. Yeah, uh, 8085 single board computer. Now, uh, a lot of people badmouth auto routers. And I think that's because they've never had a good one. <laughs> And um, they'll say, oh, well, a good PC layout guy can do it much faster than an auto router. Um, the good PC buys, the good PCB guys I've been around want a good auto router because they know when to use it and when not to use it. And one of the things they're super, super good at is when you have multiple chips, let's say you have a bunch of RAM chips or something that are basically all the same pinout. And D1 goes to D1, D2 goes to D, you know, A1 goes to A1. And, and so it, it, it's very, very tedious to, to design something like that. But it's super, super straightforward. You can see here that it's, the, the layout itself is super trivial, right? On the back, they've done something else. But if you had a good auto router, you don't just say auto route the entire board. No, 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 no. That's not how they use them. They say, um, grab the D lines and the A lines, and they say, just in this little area, just route those. And they'll push the button, and within a minute, they have this section of the board completely laid out. Um, and better than they could, uh, almost. I mean, yeah, you can always make it a little better, but I mean, it, it's perfect. It's just super perfect. So um, they're, the good guys are really, really good at knowing when to use an auto router, when not to use an auto router. Um, and unfortunately, the only auto router available um, for free versions are pretty terrible. I, I've never used Altium. I don't know how good it was. Pads had a really good auto router. Um, and uh, yeah, there is, quote, an auto router for KiCad, but it's a big joke. Uh, it's just awful. Um, so yeah, I guess you get what you pay for. There's a pretty good designer. Uh, usually by the time you're done routing the board, you're kind of tired of it and you really don't want to go back and make the artwork look pretty. You don't want to make the silk screen look pretty. But this guy took a lot of time making sure the silk screen looked really, really nice, labeling all of the uh, 
all of the signals, um, making sure everything was was labeled on the ships and stuff. So really, really top notch job of doing uh, of doing silk screens on this board. One thing I haven't talked about is how thick of a board do you want? Um, back in the day, uh, 1.6 millimeters, 62 mils was sort of the standard. It sort of still is. A lot of times you'll get boards that are one millimeter, a little bit thinner. One millimeter boards are fine, but sometimes thinner boards are nicer. Sometimes thicker boards are the thing you want to do. One of the things I haven't talked about is um, PC boards are sometimes a mechanical part of the device. Like if this were an actual motherboard, uh, this motherboard, uh, even in 0662, um, might not be thick enough. You might want a, a two millimeter board if you're going to be inserting things, if you're ever going to have any flex on the board. Um, a lot of times thicker boards are really, really nice as a mechanical construction of the parts um, also. Okay, we'll end up with this board here. Um, I want to sort of talk about how big of a board do you want? Um, people have a tendency to try to smash everything into a smallest size possible. And oftentimes that's the right thing to do. But these days, PC boards are super cheap. Um, and there's really no reason to try to minimize board area if you really don't need it. So you can see on this board that really there was not a lot of concern about utilizing every single part of the board, big blank areas and a lot of a lot of places. It's just a, it's just a standard rectangular board. Um, this looks like it was probably maybe something that was an R and D. I don't know if this was in a product or not, but um, yeah, if you don't need to, don't crowd things, space things out. Um, it might actually be beneficial that maybe this is a clock generation chip and having it over on the side, it keeps the noise out of other things. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and spread things out. Yeah. All right, we just spent some time looking at a bunch of PC boards, discussing what we liked about them, what I didn't like about them. Um, maybe there's some ideas you got away from it. Maybe there's some things go, oh yeah, I should avoid that. But yeah, uh, PC boards are super cheap these days, so yeah, don't be afraid. Uh, start, start making some.